Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, July 2nd, 2014. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's Tropical Storm Arthur, and uh, if you didn't believe that tropical storms could have eyes, that only hurricanes could have them, this is an example to prove you wrong because Arthur does have an eye right in here. The caveat to that is there's nothing truly special about a tropical storm having an eye because it usually means there was a dry air intrusion into the core that helped the eye show up and form in the first place. So that usually means the system isn't the healthiest at that moment. And uh, just to prove to you that this isn't yet a hurricane, this is the latest recon data. This plane is flying around in there right now. The strongest winds are in this quadrant here, but none of them are over hurricane force, even at flight level as of yet. And the pressure is still in the mid 990s. It was 996 from the last reliable pass. So the storm has not strengthened that much during the last 6 to 12 hours in terms of its, of its winds or pressure. Um, but the storm has become better organized. As you notice that we do have the eye, and that means the center is, at the, is in that eye and is now surrounded by these uh, deep convective clouds coming up all around the eye. And this is an improvement from yesterday when the center was still partially to fully exposed away from the deep convection. That has now changed. And uh, we're noting that, again, this dry air to the northwest is still a problem, uh, but is quickly uh, fading as a problem. We talked about this for several days now that this dry air to the northwest was going to limit the intensification of Arthur when it was in this area east of Florida and after that point it would abate and you can see now that this dry air has been pulled into the circulation which is why the west and northwest side is still dry but you note that now because this trough is coming in from the northwest notice the flow over the Carolinas and the low level clouds here see it's towards the northeast it's away from Arthur so this dry air is starting to be dragged away in the same direction that Arthur is moving which means it's not getting shoved as directly into Arthur's circulation and Arthur will still suck some of this into his own circulation, but it's not as much of a problem as it was before. And so you can see that with the convection now starting to wrap around the center, we've seen market improvement over yesterday, despite uh, not that much strengthening. But now that the system is starting to move northeastward here in response to this upper level trough that is coming in from the northwest, now it's in this area that we've again been talking about for a few days will be the most favorable for intensification of Arthur because as this trough comes down, as we can see in water vapor imagery, again, we have this jet stream from southwest to northeast here. And this is going to provide an extra outflow channel that Arthur does not yet have. Note that it has a very nice equator word outflow channel to the southeast and even one kind of to the southwest here though it's not the best but there's really not not much going on to the north here in fact the recon plane that's flying around in the upper levels of the atmosphere right now is finding light winds um, that aren't really accelerating away from Arthur in the upper levels on the north side which is what you want to see you want air accelerating away from the storm at the top of the atmosphere and that's not happening on the north side yet but when this jet stream gets close enough or Arthur gets close enough to it here towards the Carolina coast it's going to be able to utilize this jet stream as a uh, poleward outflow channel and that will aid deepening and that's what most of the models currently indicate this is the official NHC forecast. You can see the track really hasn't changed that much over the last few days. We've had fairly high confidence in this general idea that this trough will come in from the northwest and pick this up and to bring it on a track very close, unnervingly close, to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And this means that uh, there is room for this uh, only 30 to 50 miles difference left or right of this track will make a huge difference for North Carolina. If it's well offshore by about 50 miles, there will still be storm surge, rain, tropical storm force winds, but it won't be anything North Carolina doesn't see most hurricane seasons. Uh, but if it comes right over the Outer Banks here, this could be a bad hurricane, a memorable hurricane for the Outer Banks, especially since it's going to have an opportunity to strengthen and could get even stronger than the current official forecast, which takes it up to 85 miles per hour in strength here. That's still a Category 1, uh, but there is room for this to become a Category 2 quite easily if it uh, does intensify in here with the favorable conditions that it does have. And I am worried that this could reach Cat 2 intensity now if it gets a chance over the next 24 to 36 hours. It's not a long time, uh, but storms of this size, it's small enough that rapid intensification could occur during the next day and a half while it's in this very favorable environment off of the Carolinas. Now, this is the... Uh, 
GFDL model, which uh, shows, I'm going to show you basically the two solution groups that there are right now. One is the GFDL and models like it, which keep it about 50 miles offshore here, and the official track does as well. And you note that uh, all the green colors here are tropical storm force winds are greater. You can see those still clip Cape Hatteras and some of the outer banks but the hurricane force winds in purple here stay well offshore. This would be essentially the best case scenario for you guys in North Carolina. There would still be a surge on the, on the, the with the onshore flow here, uh, but it wouldn't be as bad, and uh, the hurricane force winds would stay offshore. But then there's the European, which has now shifted northwest and now joins the GFS and the Canadian in bringing the center of the hurricane essentially directly over Cape Hatteras, and uh, this would probably be a very bad hurricane for the Outer Banks if this were to come to pass. The strongest side of the storm would be offshore, but there's winds well in excess of hurricane force that would be hitting the shore here. And you see that uh, the European has this down to 966 millibars. That is easily a Category 2 hurricane, even approaching the Category 3 threshold in this model. And I don't know if it'll get that strong, but again, rapid intensification can occur with storms in a setup like this off of the Carolina coast when you have a trough coming down that isn't yet shearing it far enough away that it won't shear it but close enough to ventilate it with this outflow channel along with the outflow that it already has and the fact that the waters are warmer than normal in here it has happened before and it could happen again with a setup like this so folks need to be prepared for a strengthening Hurricane Arthur coming towards the North Carolina Outer Banks on July 4th and again, this is the official forecast track right here. There's tropical storm force warnings already out for the North Carolina coast, and a hurricane watch is out. And if it passes close enough to the coast, hurricane warnings will be issued um, before the storm gets in within proximity. So pay attention to the Hurricane Center advisories and your local National Weather Service office bulletins, and uh, please stay safe. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.